there are dozens of heroes in grand cross age of titans but which ones are actually good which ones are actually worth investing your time and resources into well today we're going to be going over the best heroes here in the game at least at the very beginning of the game grand cross age of titans is a brand new game so lots of testing still has to be done but there's been a lot of time in beta to test out a lot of these different heroes and today i'm going to be bringing you guys the best possible information that i can now as we go over these heroes we're going to be putting them in a tier list so that we guys have a general idea as to what your top priority should be and we're not actually going to go over every single hero in the game because some heroes aren't really worth talking about to be honest with you and also there's already 45 heroes in the game this video would be way too long so we're just going to focus in on a handful of heroes that I think are really worth talking about but first what's going on guys cheers before we jump in I'm happy to let you guys know that this video is actually sponsored by Grand Cross Age of Titans I've been playing this game a ton the past couple of weeks and I've been having a lot of fun so if you guys want to give this game a try go ahead and click the link in the description below okay now before we jump in we have to define what exactly are we ranking these heroes on right like some heroes are better at that's rallying an objective other heroes are better at defending an objective other heroes are better at defeating PVE content out in the world okay for this video what we're going to be focusing on is specifically open world PVP combat okay the reason for this is because that is the most common form of PVP in the game I think most players that are launching big rally attacks or who are stationing an objective are players who've been playing for a long time who have had access to some of the most powerful heroes in the game and most of you who are playing who are brand new to the game and maybe you are a free to play player you might not have as many heroes at your disposal to do that specific task really really well so you want to rely on the strongest players in your kingdom to do those things for you in the PVP context but everybody in the game is able to do open field fighting the other thing that is important to know is that if a hero is good at open field PVP they're also probably going to be dealing a lot of damage to the PVE content like the Dark Elves and other monsters that you're going to be fighting so it's sort of like a two birds with one stone analogy where if you're optimizing for one thing you're also doing pretty well in something else as well okay the first hero we're going to talk about is Arthur he's a legendary infantry and attack hero and his active skill here Lion's Roar it says it inflicts damage equal to up to 450 percent of attack on up to five enemy troops troops in a fan shaped area to the front so this is a massive AoE that's over 2250 percent of attack going out as damage in a single turn this is one of the most powerful active skills in the game right now if we look at the second skill he gets 25 percent infantry defense his third skill says that he gets 15 percent more troops his fourth skill says that he has a 50 percent chance to reduce the skill damage taken by 15 percent for three seconds when the skill is used this has a five second cooldown and his awakening skill says that he has a 40 percent chance of inflicting damage equal to 300 percent of attack when attacking with his skill this also has a 10 second cooldown okay so as if his active skill didn't already have a massive amount of damage now there's a 40 percent chance that you're going to hit him with another 300 so that's over 2500 percent of attack as damage for a single turn this if you do the math it will probably trigger once every other skill cycle most likely okay so i'm gonna put arthur in the s tier i know we're starting off strong here but arthur is definitely one of the best heroes in the game his damage output with his skill is insane he has a ton of defense he's very tanky he is the ultimate infantry open field fighter from my analysis he just seems like he is one of the best now while we're actually here on the tier maker let me go ahead and fill in what I like to call the niche role okay these are heroes that you should absolutely be investing in in the early game specifically for PVE content or gathering okay so when you're looking at this tier list at the very end of this video uh, I would say focus on these heroes first for their skill that matters the most what do I mean by this well let's go ahead and drop in some heroes that I think belong in this uh category okay and there it is that's quite a lot okay 
and the reason that I want to just get these guys out of the way first and these are in no particular order by the way if we were to say which one is the best here it's got to be Actaeus honestly um but if you look at everything in the niche role here these all of these heroes are not very good in PvP okay I wouldn't really use any of them in PvP except for maybe Valkyrie and maybe Helena but I think there's a better choice than her which we're going to get into later in the video but all the heroes in the niche role are heroes who are either hunt heroes or gather heroes okay uh, and the reason that you want to focus on these right at the beginning of the game is because those two activities defeating the monsters out in the world and gathering resources that is how you're going to progress your account the fastest okay so get those out of the way first and then move on to the rest of the heroes that we talk about in this list now when you're looking at what skills you should be working on for these gathering heroes and for the uh, hunt heroes focus on either the increase in gather speed or for the hunt heroes you want to focus on increase in hero experience if they don't have an increase in hero experience skill then you can focus on an increase to hero damage which you see here uh Valkyrie actually has a little bit of both here which is really really nice and one of the best things about the skill upgrade system in this game that is better than any other city builder game that I have played is that you literally get to choose which skill you level up okay it's not random you just decide what skill do you want and that is amazing for heroes like Kea who her second skill is actually the one that I care about the most so I can completely skip her active skill and go all in on the one that I care about I love having control over that that is one of the best parts about Grand Cross Age of Titans and their entire hero system as a matter of fact I'm just going to change the name of this tier to early game priority okay you're never going to use PvP with them but you need them to progress fast if you guys missed my beginner's guide for Grand Cross Age of Titans where I go more in depth on leveling up and progressing faster there's going to be a link in the description below to check that out I highly recommend it okay with that out of the way let's move on to Claudia Claudia is a legendary infantry and hunt hero and she's easily one of the best free to play legendary heroes in the game the reason for this is because there is actually an event at the beginning of your server called heroes return and if you pay attention to the actual story of the game they will tell you kind of why this this event actually exists but you're going to be able to get enough of her mana stones to completely max out her first skill 100 free to play which gives 550 percent of attack on up to three enemy targets in a fan-shaped area 1650 percent of attack as damage going out in a single turn aoe that is not as good as arthur but remember she is free to play friendly she's someone that you're going to get access to right away her second skill gives her a bonus to counter-attack damage this is the amount of damage that you're dealing every single turn to targets that are hitting you that you might not even be hitting back and also you're going to get 60 percent bonus damage to monsters her third skill gives her 15 percent infantry hp which is huge her fourth skill gives her 20 percent bonus skill damage and she also gives your infantry titans 20 percent bonus attack finally her awakened skill gives her 450 mana when a skill is used that is a massive amount of mana okay if you guys don't know how the mana system works in this game every single turn you're going to be regenerating some amount of mana once the mana bar is maxed out for your hero they're going to launch their active skill so essentially what this awakening skill does is it allows you to use this active skill quicker you're going to be using it more frequently out in the world and we just talked about how this is dealing an insane amount of damage okay so Claudia is an exceptionally good infantry hero and she's very free to play friendly I'm going to put her in the B tier she is not as good as Arthur even though she is also a legendary and one of her skills does focus primarily on hunting which isn't great for PvP also the awakening skill is great but it's going to take a long time to get there so there's a lot to love about her and she's great for free to play she's a very high b maybe even a low a you could consider and we'll take a look at that later in the video next up let's talk about corvo who is a legendary infantry and support hero now let me just say uh, i'm not just picking infantry here i'm literally just going down the line as i see them and we're going to talk about a lot of unique heroes on this tier list as well so it's not just legendaries bear with me corvo is actually even though he doesn't have the station talent tree he seems like he is primarily used 
as a station hero probably as a secondary the reason for this is because he does 800 of attack as damage to a single troop so no aoe here we see 15 percent hp for infantry we also see a five percent barrier for three seconds when you have less than 50 percent this is a 10 second cooldown and his fourth skill says that he has a 10 percent chance to heal 200 percent of your attack when hit you also see the awakening skill basically bumps up his third skill it improves it to a eight percent barrier okay and this barrier is why i think a lot of players use him as a station hero because think about this eight percent of your forces it's a massive shield okay it's going to take a lot of damage from your enemy to break that shield which is why he is so good as a station hero also his liege skill which we haven't really talked about much in this video gives him immunity so for 30 seconds he can't be debuffed okay so he is excellent at defending an objective but for most players they're not really going to be doing that remember what we're talking about in this video is open field pvp he's not really great for open field pvp yes he'll deal a lot of damage to a single target he's very tanky but for open field fighting i would put him in b tier probably behind claudia but for the purposes of this video we're going to put him as a station hero okay i think if you're going to be investing in him he requires a lot of legendary mana stones to get the awakening skill right if you're going to be doing that you probably want to be a station player and most players aren't so keep that in mind sort of in the same vein as corvo is helga okay she is a legendary combine and support hero and she is also pretty tanky she's typically used as a station hero mainly for castle walls now she does have aoe here 500 percent of attack for three targets that's 1500 total and it increases the damage that they take by 20 percent for three seconds so an insane debuff for that target uh we also see 10 percent more counter damage dealt which is really nice we have here 50 percent chance of inflicting damage equal to 250 percent of attack on enemy troops when attacking with a skill so anytime that this pops off either as the primary or secondary there's 50 percent chance that you're just going to get even more damage out of her which is insane 15 percent more hp which is really really nice and here we see five percent chance to become immune to all disruption effects for 10 seconds when using basic attacks does not activate during immunity also if you max out her lead skill she takes 10 percent reduced all damage for two minutes that is really long so in a station or rally scenario that is when you want to use this that is going to make a big difference the best part about helga is that nothing here is specific for a troop type so it's not like she can only be used for infantry or only be used for cavalry she is great for literally anything as a secondary you slap her in there she's tanky she's got aoe she's great now as much as she is used as a station hero i'm gonna put her in the b tier i think you can use her in pvp in the open world just keep that in mind if you do get her she's mainly used for stationing at this point so she might not be the top priority investment for you next let's talk about freya okay this is a really interesting hero and at first glance might look really weak but it's actually one of the best legendary heroes in the game they are a combat engineer and attack hero and their active skill says that they inflict damage equal to 700 of attack on a single target enemy troop and decreases their hp for up to five enemy units in a circular area around that target by 15 percent for three seconds okay we're gonna get into why freya is so broken in a little bit but let's go over the rest of the kit here decreases all damage taken by 15 percent when remaining forces of troops commanded is at 70 percent or higher that's amazing if you are fighting in the open world you probably do want to retreat when you get below like 50 percent anyway so for a majority of your fighting you're gonna have 15 percent less damage taken amazing third skill increases defense by 25 percent and hp by 25 percent for combat engineer troops and additionally increases attack by 40 percent for catapult troops commanded by freya that is the secret sauce to freya and that is the catapult we're going to talk about that about that in just a second the four skill decreases counter damage by 15 percent for troops commanded by freya and the awakening skill says 20 percent chance to heal lightly wounded units by 200 percent of attack when hit freya becomes insane around mid to late game and the reason for that is the catapults okay essentially in this game uh what you can do is your combat engineers which are essentially your battle carts okay these are your siege units they're great for gathering but not that much else well great news when you unlock your tier four units in your academy you have the ability to convert your combat engineers into catapults 
yes you can convert them into catapults okay uh, and you can also convert them back and forth depending on what you want to do but here's the thing about catapults in grand cross age of titans they attack just like a ranged unit okay so typically the only ranged units that you're going to have are going to be your archers however if you convert your combat engineers into catapults suddenly they are also ranged they also attack at a farther range than archers with the trade-off being that they deal a little bit less damage okay so ranged archers deal more damage but ranged catapults deal slightly less damage but attack from much farther away which is absolutely huge now remember freya gives you 50 percent of stats here for combat engineers or 40 percent catapult attack now the thing is that because you're going to be you're going to have the highest range of fighting uh, a lot of times you're going to be at the very back of the battle so there's a good chance that you might not even be attacked by very many things so you're pumping out insane damage from range and this 15 percent uh aoe debuff is something that you can apply to many targets five targets from far away from the safety of you know behind your infantry behind all your tanky units uh freya is essentially a massive chip damage dealer they're going to be popping off insane amounts of damage and debuffs at range and at range you don't take that much counter damage anyway but Freya reduces it even more it's amazing this is definitely one of the best heroes in the game and while you're safely in the back row you're going to be healing as well which is just nuts in my opinion Freya is a high a or low s tier hero it really depends on what you're doing with them I think because it's somebody that you can't even really work on until mid to late game I'm gonna put them in a because you can't really use them right out of the gate unless like you're a whale or something like that but Freya has a lot of great uses you could definitely justify the S tier but for now we're gonna leave it at we're gonna play it safe we're gonna leave Freya in a tier next let's talk about Finn this is actually the first unique hero that we're gonna talk about in the video and this is also one of the first unique heroes that you get in the game I'm pretty sure that you actually just get this hero for free in the early game uh and the thing about Finn is that Finn is not a very great hero but is worth talking about for one reason in particular okay this is an archer and maneuver hero and the single target damage here is okay decreasing the healing that they receive I mean that's not great right not that many heroes are doing a lot of healing anyway you have 10 percent attack you have 10 percent March speed you also have a 30 percent chance to decrease the enemy's March speed by 20 percent which is actually quite good this is a very good slowdown and snare it really helps you target down a specific enemy all your allies can swarm that one target and then the awakening skill decreases the defense of enemy troops by 15 percent for three seconds when using an active skill okay 10 second cooldown but anytime you pop this off not only are you going to debuff their healing but you're also going to debuff their defense as well so um it's it's an okay kit the maneuver uh talent tree essentially makes you faster in the open world but the main reason we're talking about Flynn is actually the lead skill leveling up Finn to level 60 will get you a really nice lead skill here okay what it says is that it returns your selected troop to the castle immediately excludes troops that are gathering rallying or stationing and it has a two hour cooldown now amongst lead skills that's actually one of the lower cooldowns but the ability to literally just teleport back to safety no matter what and remember your lead skills are used out in the world so it's not like you can only use this skill on Finn that's not true at all you'll see in the bottom right corner these are the skills that I can use at any point while I'm out in the world it doesn't matter what heroes I have deployed so you can just put Finn's lead skill down here and you could be fighting with whatever heroes you want and if they end up in a really bad scenario boom you teleport them back okay talk about Freya we just talked about Freya with you know when you go below 70 percent let's say you don't want to be in that scenario anymore and your catapults are too slow to run away boom you just teleport back to your city it is an instant go back to safety and it can be used every two hours really really niche use but definitely worth talking about here in the video and the best part about that lead skill is that you don't have to invest any mana stones or anything like that into Finn you're just going to get it by leveling them up to 60 and investing some stars so I'm going to put Finn in the C tier uh definitely not great for PvP but has one specific niche use that is excellent and it doesn't cost you any mana stones to get it next let's talk about Heimosu this is another unique hero in the game they're an archer and station hero and this is one of my favorite heroes in the entire game okay you can see I brought them to level 34 I have some of their skills invested in already Heimosu is extremely good especially in the early game and for free to play players okay the active skill here says inflicts damage equal to 450 percent of attack on up to three enemy troops in a circular area around the target that's wild then it increases the damage that they take by 20 percent for three seconds so 
remember archer units in this game attack at range so essentially what this is saying is that while you're in the back while you are safely behind all of your infantry and cavalry who are in the front lines Hemosu is dealing aoe three targets to a circular area that you choose at the front line and you can just apply a massive debuff to three targets from safety this is insane this active skill is so good and 1350 percent of attack is actually pretty good for a unique hero her second skill says you have a 15 percent chance of dealing an additional basic basic attack on the same turn when attacking so in other words you have a 15 percent chance of dealing double basic attack damage for that turn uh, i have to test this out obviously i haven't gotten this up very high so for me this occurs very infrequently but i suspect that this will give you more mana the way that mana works is that you gain mana every single turn and i think that this will probably count as two turns worth of mana for that basic attack again don't quote me we'll have to test that but that seems to be it seems really really good her third skill says you have a 10 percent chance of inflicting 250 percent of attack on the targets when using basic attacks now they don't list a cooldown here I don't know if there is an internal cooldown but that's nice okay one in every 10 turns roughly you're going to be dealing an extra 250 percent of your attack as damage uh finally the last skill is the one that matters the least here because it only works when you're stationed but it says that it increases your defense by 10 percent when you're stationed so if you are using her for you know castle walls to station um that's great her awakening skill actually increases the second skill from 15 percent chance of occurring to 20 percent chance of occurring so one in five attacks are going to be double attacks which is really really nice so nice chip damage over time from a hero that is going to be again attacking at range hey mosu to me is an a tier hero absolutely she is very good and you can notice here that these are both very powerful ranged heroes with very powerful debuffs next up is isaac this is a legendary cavalry and defend hero and this is a very solid cavalry hero to invest in the active skill here says inflicts damage equal to 800 percent of attack on a single enemy troop target then increases the commanding troops damage dealt by 15 percent for three seconds so a really solid buff to your army and nice single target damage second skill gives you 20 percent of cavalry defense that's really tanky and you can see here with the defense talent tree it makes sense that he would have a skill like that the third skill says decreases pincer attack damage taken by 15 percent for troops commanded by isaac and increases damage dealt by 15 percent when performing when performing a pincer attack now pincer attacks are when multiple armies are hitting the same target okay so if you are getting hit with a pincer attack from multiple uh, targets then you're going to take 15 percent less damage very tanky very good and if you're doing the pincer attack 15 percent more damage we love to see that okay the fourth skill says increases counter damage dealt by 20 percent for troops commanded by isaac so you are really punishing players for hitting you okay isaac is one of those heroes where if you see him in the war out in the open world you probably just want to leave him alone don't hit him okay if you if you try to pincer attack him you're gonna have a bad time if you try to swarm him down he's gonna deal a lot more damage back to you uh it's nuts okay his awakening skill has a 25 percent chance to decrease the basic attack damage taken by 70 percent in the next turn when hit with a basic attack this has only a three second cooldown okay so this is only uh one turns worth of basic attack damage but it's got a very low cooldown so it could occur pretty frequently isaac is very very tanky very solid the question is do you want a tanky cavalry hero i would say that he probably goes here he probably goes in the b tier he's very very good he the problem with him is that he has melee range okay so like for free to play players um it's you're gonna be really at the front lines here and it's gonna take a lot of mana stones to get that uh, awakening skill on him so it's a pretty big investment for a tanky melee cavalry hero um he's again very good really punishes targets for hitting him but i don't think that he really makes the cut for a tier next i want to talk about ivan okay ivan has one of the coolest designs in the game and he's also a hero that comes around on a limited time banner i don't know if his banner has gone away it actually hasn't here it is we have the ivan grand summon so this is at least for my kingdom the second uh special limited time banner that came around you can get him from the normal advanced summons as well so keep that in mind that's how i got him and i actually got like three copies of him it's actually insane how lucky i got with him now here's the thing with ivan okay he is a legendary combine and attack hero and his active skill is wild five targets 400 attack damage aoe to a circular area around the target which means he attacks he has the ability to attack 
at ranged which means you can slap him as the secondary behind a ranged hero and he's gonna pump out insane aoe damage to the front line this is two thousand percent skill damage wild okay second skill it gets even better 20 percent bonus skill damage okay so you're gonna be dealing even more damage here which is nuts third skill increases damage by 10 percent for troops when commanded by ivan when attacking an enemy castle so here's one of the downsides of ivan is that he's really great for rallying but this skill does nothing out in the world the fourth skill says increases attack by 15 percent okay so very vanilla raw damage dealer there's no tankiness here okay there's no defense no health no reduced damage taken none of that stuff one of the skills doesn't even do anything in open world fighting uh and then the awakening skill says you have a 10 percent chance to restore 300 mana when attacking that is a massive amount of mana you are going to be popping off insane aoe skill damage with ivan and i recommend using him at range because he doesn't have any tanky stats here and the attack is great for that he's really good in rallies in open world he definitely again you have to use him at range where he's safe uh and he's going to be pumping out insane damage but because he's so squishy because you do have to take all of that into consideration i am going to put him i'm gonna say middle of b tier okay uh if you get caught in the open world without any defenses you're gonna get wrecked you're just gonna get wrecked but if you can play him carefully and you could play him properly he's gonna be insane for skill damage output so keep that in mind next let's talk about jang sung who is another unique archer and support hero his active skill deals 625 percent of attack to a single enemy target troop and decreases the damage that they deal by 30 percent for three seconds that is a massive debuff and you can do this at range because he's archer his second skill gives him 10 percent attack and damage dealt to monsters is increased by 60 percent for archers commanded by jang sung third skill says decreases basic attack damage taken from ranged troops by 10 percent for troops commanded really nice stuff here okay he himself is ranged so he's probably going to be taking range damage and also he increases the basic attack damage by 10 percent for troops commanded so that's nice that is the numbers that you're going to see ticking every single turn 10 percent more damage there his awakening skill says increases skill damage by 30 percent that is amazing this is an insanely good combination with the uh Heimosu that we've already talked about okay I would probably do Heimosu primary because she's going to make them take more damage and then you're going to hit them with the Jeng Sung uh skill damage here which is really really nice overall the synergy here is great this is one of the best unique heroes in the game in my opinion I'm going to put him at the bottom of B tier okay he is a unique hero so I don't want to get too excited and I don't think he's as good as Heimosu who is an A tier and don't worry we are going to fill in more on the S and A tier later in the video okay so we're not just going to fill at the B tier I promise next let's talk about Jeanette this is probably the best unique hero in the entire game she is exceptionally good and she's also gorgeous I mean look at her oh my god she is a unique combine and attack hero her active skill says she deals 300 of attack to up to three targets in a semi-circle area to the front and decreases their mana by 100 okay so this is 900 percent damage factor which is wild semicircle area is really nice it's almost as good as a full circle so you're going to be able to hit a lot of targets here which is amazing and reducing their mana means that the enemy is going to deal less active skills or in other words they're going to gain the an, enough mana to deal their active skill slower which is wild okay her second skill increases attack by 10 percent really flat increase in attack it doesn't matter the troop type you can use her with anything she's universal her third skill increases damage by 10 percent flat 10 percent damage straight up that's insane fourth skill restores 100 mana when skill is used okay and her awakening gives her fourth skill a bump up to 200 mana so not only are you reducing the targets of mana and making them deal active skills slower but you're gaining 200 mana when she's awakened which means you're gonna use your active skills faster it's a rage engine it's a it's a mana engine okay because the more mana you get the more active skills you pop and whenever you pop active skills you get more mana which means you're gonna pop your next active skill faster and it goes on and on and on she is 
very very powerful one of the best unique heroes if not the best unique hero in the game you could slap her with basically anybody i would say don't use her with archers because her active skill can't be used at range but you could slap her behind any cavalry pretty much any infantry it doesn't matter she is great i'm putting her in a tier above heimosu but below freya very very strong hero should definitely be one of the first ones that you focus on next let's talk about calipi this is a unique infantry and station hero and she is really quite tanky she is definitely one of the better unique heroes in the game her active skill says she creates a barrier equal to five percent of remaining forces for three seconds on the commanding troop and increases counter damage by 15 percent okay so essentially when her active skill goes off you're not going to be taking damage until that uh barrier is broken and while they're hitting you and not dealing any damage you're going to be dealing more counter damage back to them. Really good stuff. Very tanky. Her second skill increases defense by 10% and HP by 10% for infantry troops commanded. This is very tanky stats. 20% of tanky stats is great. Her third skill decreases skill damage taken from enemy troops by 10%. Okay. So we've been talking a lot in this video about how good skill damage is. Uh, and this is, you're just taking 10% less of it, no matter what the hero is that's hitting you very good stuff and finally the last skill says increases attack for infantry troops when a barrier is active on the commanding troop by 10 percent okay the awakening skill says it increases the defense by 12 percent and hp by 12 percent so a little bump in the number of stats here all right so the fourth skill gives you a nice chunk of attack for three seconds every single time the skill is used she is again a very tanky and excellent unique infantry hero i'm gonna put her in the middle of b tier okay she's ba barriers are better in this game than you think i know i know that this might look like a high placing for her barriers are very good in this game especially in the early game it's very hard to crack them and she's gonna be pumping out that counter damage while it's happening and she's a unique hero so you're gonna be able to get her your hands on her way easier than a lot of the other legendaries in the b tier so she's she's really good next we'll talk about belly moir this is a legendary combine and attack hero and this hero in my opinion is mainly used for rallies okay i want to talk about them because they they do matter they are a very strong hero but mainly you should be focusing on them for rallies and the design here is insane this dude looks amazing 800 skill damage to a single target very vanilla single target damage no no buffs no no debuffs nothing second skill 30 percent skill damage bro oh my god he's gonna hit like a truck third skill increases attack by 120 percent when remaining forces are 20 percent or lower so again this is in a rally scenario this is going to give you a nice bump in damage when your rally is getting low the final skill increases troop size by 20 percent so you bring more troops to the battlefield and the awakening skill decreases defense of enemy troops by 50 percent for three seconds when attacking with your skill okay really nice Th i mean this is the debuff that you want for the active skill which you don't get until it is awakened okay and finally the leech skill is really nice here uh, when you level him all the way up to 60 it's going to give you 100 mana every single turn circular aoe buffing here for 30 seconds that's 3000 mana times the number of units that are getting this buff and it's only a two hour cooldown insane lead skill especially for rallies and open field fighting in my opinion belly moir goes as a rally hero i think that is the people who should be investing in him uh if you are just focused on open field open world fighting uh he he's not really like he's got vanilla damage but until he's awakened you get that debuff he's he's okay for open world fighting but mainly he's used for rallies and also he doesn't care about any troop type okay so you can basically use him as like a secondary to anything and he's really good next let's talk about Bayom. i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right i do apologize he is a legendary cavalry and siege hero okay so he is really good at attacking castles and that is where he's going to land on this tier list just as a little spoiler alert okay his active skill inflicts 750 skill damage on a single enemy troop target and heals 250 percent of lightly wounded in your army that's crazy second skill 10 percent troop capacity and 10 percent rally troop size so just bring more troops in your army really good stuff there for rallies 20 percent bonus cavalry attack which is great and 20 percent bonus skill damage okay his awakening skill basically bumps up the number of troops that he's bringing to the battle which is nice and ultimately this is another one of those heroes where you're mainly going to be using him specifically for rallies okay he is going to go here as just alongside Bellamar great for leading rallies he's insane at that um but ultimately he's really just doing single target damage and healing a little bit if you're using him in open world pvp so 
I wouldn't typically invest in him just for open world PVP. Next, let's talk about Melaby. And this is another legendary archer and support hero. And she's really good. Okay. She is. Do not let the looks deceive you. She, I know she's adorable, but she's got the horns. Okay. She's going to deal damage. Her active skill says she deals 450% skill damage to up to five enemy troops in a circular area around the target. So at ranged circular AOE, okay, and increases the basic attack damage dealt by 50% for five seconds for up to five allied troops within range. Bro, insane buff, really long duration, really high skill damage. This is wild. And she's dealing circular AOE at range. Insane, insane. Her second skill says increases attack by 15% for archer troops and additionally increases attack by 25% for bomber troops commanded by Melaby. So, okay, here's how this works. Bombers are essentially the siege equivalent for archers. Okay. So as we talked about early in the, earlier in this video, um, your combat engineers can be converted into catapults. Your archers can be converted into bombers. Bombers are really powerful because they can fly and they can attack at ranged. So literally this is like, she's, she's buffing both, whether you're only using archers in the early game, or you're using bombers in the late game. When you get tier four, she's insane for both, uh, even better for bombers, to be honest with you. So yes, she's great in the early game and she's great in the late game. She boosts both. It's amazing. Her third skill increases troop attacks by 30% when a barrier is active on the enemy troop target. So unfortunately, this is not something you can really control but a lot of the infantry heroes do produce their own barriers we talked about calipi before okay so i mean archers counter infantry anyway and the probability that they'll, that they'll have a barrier at some point is high regardless so really great for countering infantry finally she has a 20 percent chance dealing an additional basic attack in the same turn we've talked about this in the video that is really nice stuff and finally her passive awakening skill says decreases counter damage taken by 50 percent by troops commanded by Melaby. Oh my God, bro. She at range, you don't even take that much counter damage anyway, but to reduce it by 50%, bro, she is easily one of the best heroes in the game. No question. She is right up there with Arthur. She is definitely one of the best heroes in the game. And the last hero we're going to talk about in this video is Erdell. Okay. And this hero we have to talk about because as far as I know, I'm pretty sure that this is the station meta. Okay. She is a legendary combined and station hero and she's so good as a station hero she is exceptional okay she increases defense by 15 percent and counter damage by 15 percent for five seconds and then heals with a 500 percent healing factor that is wild second skill increases hp by 15 percent really tanky third skill increases troops attack by 10 percent and defense by 10 percent when stationed so another 20 percent of stats her fourth skill says decreases damage taken by 30 percent when remaining forces of troops are 90 percent or higher which is really only going to happen at the earlier stages of a of a defense but remember we have a healing factor here really good stuff awakening skill says increases defense it, so basically it bumps up the um active skill you get 20 percent defense 20 percent counter damage and the same healing factor and finally we have group immunity as the lead skill here okay so at level 60 she says troops within the selected area become immune for 120 seconds so you cannot debuff them but ultimately this is a station hero and you can only obtain them by purchasing the vip bundles so this isn't even a hero that a lot of you guys may even get your hands on so we're going to drop them in the station category okay now if the hero is down here and i didn't talk about them in this video that means they're probably not on the same caliber as the ones in the in the tier list that's not to say that they're bad and more testing has to be done right for example the damage over time for agnes could be insane but not that many people have her awakened right now so it's just really hard to test her so don't count on this list to be the end all be all like this is it this is just how the game is right at the time of recording this video and how i've seen it how i've experienced it and how my alliance members have experienced it both now and in beta so my advice for you is that if you have anything in the s or a tier it's a no-brainer definitely invest in them freya is probably maybe a late game invest right so maybe you know those 
top four the s and a those top four focus on those in the early game uh they're going to be your best bang for your buck this is infantry priority this is archer priority and then everything in b tier is really solid it's solid for open world pvp there's more niche uses down here but all of this should be done after you do the early game priority heroes and their skills that matter the most now really quick if you're watching this video right when it comes out pre-registration is starting now so go ahead and use the link in the description below to get 2200 gems for free in game the game is launching globally on android ios and pc and i can't wait to play with you guys with that being said guys if you found this video useful or informative i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other grand cross agents titans players might see it comment down below your thoughts on the heroes that we talked about in this video by no means this is perfect and i'm sure that i can learn from you guys as well so please comment down below your thoughts consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a grand cross age of titans video i also want to take another moment to thank the sponsor of today's video which is grand cross age of titans i'm so lucky to be sponsored by them because the game is actually it's super good and i'm having a blast so if you guys haven't tried the game yet go ahead and click the link down below give the game a try it's free and we're going to be covering it even more here on the channel with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace